In 2024, the life of every EV owner is changing forever as charging networks switch to the Tesla connector. Here's what you need to know about this monumental change. So Ford and Honda, Genesis, Mercedes-Benz, Rivian, Volkswagen, and many, many other car companies, basically all of the big players have announced they're transitioning from the CCS plug to Tesla's design, which is officially called the North American Charging Standard, either NACS or NACS for short. And this move will provide numerous benefits to electric vehicle drivers. But what's most interesting here is that this switch was not really possible until recently, specifically November of 2022, when Tesla did something, well, rather unexpected. And then they decided to open up that standard so that anybody can use it. So prior to that, it was you know patent-controlled standard that only Tesla vehicles could use. They turned it to an open standard that allowed other vehicle manufacturers and other EV charger manufacturers to start using that standard. The open availability of NACS is tremendous news for rival automakers. This will provide their EV customers with numerous and significant benefits, advantages that were previously pretty much only available to Tesla drivers. I, mean, I think the biggest reason is the DC fast charging network. When you look at the number of fast chargers that Tesla has across the country, and the advantages of the auto manufacturers to be able to offer their customers use of that vast network is the biggest motivator. Tesla has done a really good job with their supercharger network. Yes, they way outnumber the rest of the fleet out there that's using CCS. But it's not just access to the supercharger network, which to be clear is a game-changing development. There are other important upsides to going with NACS. You know, Tesla was taking some inspiration from the design ideas at Apple uh, when they designed that. You know, Apple likes has always liked to keep their connectors kind of smaller and sleeker than than maybe what some of the industry standards were. You know, they did that with the Lightning connector. Tesla opted to do something similar with their connector, and they had a bit of a different philosophy from SAE in designing that connector. Uh, the SAE committee that was de that developed. Uh, the J1772 connector and then later CCS um, decided that they they wanted a very robust connector that would last at least 10,000 insertion cycles. So plugging it in and unplugging it from a from a charge port on a car at least 10,000 times before it was worn out. Um, Tesla apparently decided that that was over over engineering it, over designing it, and so they designed a connector and a cable that goes with it that was designed for somewhere closer to about 2,500 to 3,000 uses and decided up front that rather than trying to design a connector and a cable that would last, you know, 10,000 cycles, they'll just plan on replacing them a little more frequently. Uh, and one of the advantages of that is that the, the connector itself and the charging cable are a lot slimmer, a lot lighter uh, for people to use. And it, it, it also, the way it's designed, it goes into the charge port on the car much more easily. As, as a user, and I have a, my wife drives a Tesla and, and I drive a Rivian. We use both um, the Max and G1772. It's a very similar user experience. I think the Max charger is a little bit sleeker. Um, it's a little bit lighter and, and easier to handle and, and probably even plug in and out of your car. We really like the feature of being able to use the charger gun to open up the charging port in the vehicle. Um, that's, an, that's a really nice convenience. And so there is some small ad advantages over it, but it's still gonna charge your car in the same way uh, that the J1772 would charge your car. Automakers switching to NACS are giving their customers access to what is currently the most robust and reliable DC fast charging network on the continent. Additionally, drivers also gain a much easier to handle plug, one that manages both AC and DC charging in one sleek design. Now these are the main reasons for the migration from CCS to NACS, but there are some potential pitfalls. 
Tesla will have a much harder job of making sure that the software in their superchargers can communicate properly with the software in all these different vehicles that are trying to use them. And so it, there's a distinct possibility that the high level of reliability we see with superchargers today will not last come next spring and next summer when other manufacturers' vehicles are starting to use superchargers. One of the, the challenges with EV charging that is fundamentally different from driving an internal combustion vehicle is that the charger and the vehicle have to talk to each other continuously during that process. Um, when you pull up to a gas pump with an internal combustion vehicle, you stick that nozzle in the fuel filler net and it, the pump, the, the gas pump doesn't care what vehicle it's filling. It doesn't care if the tank is bone dry or 80% full. With an EV, the charger has to talk to the vehicle, figure out what is the maximum charge rate that the vehicle can absorb, what is the state of charge of the battery at, in real time, uh, and then they, they have to negotiate and also negotiate for uh, authentication for payment uh, for charging. Everything has to line up. There's you know, handshakes going on. And if it doesn't all line up correctly, um, then you can very easily have a failed charging session, even if the hardware is actually functioning correctly. Yep, reliability is a major issue with EV charging networks, and we've had so many problems with Electrify America, for instance, and I really hope superchargers will work well with non-Tesla vehicles, though Sam did mention there's another, well, kind of unexpected hardware-related issue some drivers will have to contend with. Uh, and this should be changed as Tesla starts to deploy their their version four superchargers, but at least the superchargers that have been deployed up to this point do tend to have a fairly short cable on them. Uh, and that's in part because they have the charge port in the same location on all of their vehicles, on the, the left rear corner of all of their vehicles. When you look at everyone else's EVs, the, the charge ports are all over the place. Sometimes it's on the left rear, sometimes it's on the right rear, sometimes it's on a front fender. In some cases, like uh, the Hyundai Kona and the Kia Niro uh, or the Leaf, uh, it's in it's in the, the front fascia. While you can nominally charge a CCS vehicle off of one of those chargers, the cable's just not long enough to reach the charge port. V4 superchargers first came out in 2023, and Tesla will certainly be adding more and more going forward. They have longer cables and, of course, a maximum charging rate of 250 kilowatts. But finally, one other potential downside to this big connector switch is that EVs fitted with CCS ports won't be able to use any Tesla chargers. Or will they? Good question me. I'm very, very insightful like that. A lot of people don't know. If I have a NAX charger and I have a J1717 T2 car, what can I do or will I do? And there's absolutely already adapters on the market. Most of the OEMs are including adapters now in their 2024 models that will go from NAX to J1772. And again, I'm doing this at home now. So far, I've never missed a charge, never had a problem. It's been really seamless. Sean, of course, was talking about AC charging, but adapters will still be needed to connect CCS-equipped vehicles to Tesla superchargers, specifically for DC fast charging. And these should be available in the market now, but it's still unclear how automakers will handle this. None of the automakers have given any specific details. My guess is that they will probably charge at least some nominal fee for the adapters. Probably the existing owners may get one, uh, one adapter free of charge, uh, and then they can buy extras if they want. Um, and then new, new vehicles that are still built with a CCS connector uh, for now uh, will probably get one bundled in. At, at this moment, we have no other specific details about how they're going to um, market these adapters. But things are certain to evolve very quickly in the coming months and years as new functionality gets added and automakers learn the ins and outs of NACS. Right now, SAE is working on a new standard, uh, J3400, that takes the, the Tesla connector design uh, and they're integrating it into an industry standard uh, that also includes some other features above and beyond what Tesla has done to date things like bi-directional charging, uh, also incorporating 
the, uh, the communication protocols that are part of the CCS standard. Uh, so that's that version of it. Uh, while it physically looks the same as what Tesla uses today, um, we'll have some additional features. So it's kind of like USB-C where there's USB-C that only charges, there's USB-C in data, various speeds, uh, there's Thunderbolt 4, which uses the USB-C connector, but has a whole other set of features. So that's what we're gonna end up with. Now that it's an open protocol and we've all got equal access to using the technology and developing in and around the technology, I do not see any downside to NAX versus the CCS or J1772, I'd be not at all. NACS has a few limitations. Tesla's supercharger reliability may go down when other EVs start using them in large numbers. And of course, some drivers will need adapters if their vehicles have CCS ports. But overall, NACS should provide a superior charging experience for all EV users once it is implemented on a large scale, which will be a very good thing. But you don't have to wait even a couple months to juice up at a Tesla supercharger if you're nearby a Magic Dock installation. Watch this right over here to learn how to use this special hardware that allows CCS equipped vehicles to use NACS right now. We charged up at one and have step-by-step -step instructions.